Tractor companies do not want me making this video. They've got some secrets they don't want you to know. I'm about to tell them to you in this video right now. So you better watch this video. It might get deleted, who knows? I don't know. The tractor companies, they don't like what I'm about to tell you. They all use foreign parts. There's a lot of information out there about tractors, tractor manufacturers, who makes what. And the truth of the matter is, they all use foreign parts or other suppliers for their tractors. That's just the nature of the beast. The, there's no one out there, there's no tractor manufacturer out there that actually makes 100% of their tractor. Now there are two that gets pretty doggone close and we're gonna talk about that uh, toward the end of the video, but from my research, they all farm out different parts of their tractor. Let's start with the simple things like uh, the tires, right? Right now, there's there's two big, uh, maybe three big tractor manufacturer tires or tractor tire manufacturers, I should say, that are out there right now. Number one is Titan. Titan makes tires for most all the tractor uh, out there. And, and when I say tractors, this video is going to be geared 99% to compact tractors or subcompact tractors. So if you're a big ag guy, this video does not apply to you. This is all like 55 horsepower and below uh, information in this video. Titan is gonna be a big player in the tire market game, right? They make a lot of tires for a lot of tractor manufacturers or supply tires uh, for each manufacturer. But you're gonna have Titan, you're gonna have Continental, and you're gonna have Carlisle. When they say that they're, uh, you know, hey, our tractors is 100% ours, or they're, these tractor manufacturers are gonna use these these terms and these um, this terminology to try to get you to think that their tractor is 100% their own, right? Well, the engineering may be, or the manufacturing may be, but the parts supplied to get to that point will always be a conglomerate of other, play, of other parts and pieces from other companies. Like we just talked about tires, but there's another part like um, HST transmissions. So if you're looking at hydrostatic transmissions, then like there's companies, there's some that make their own, like Yanmar makes their own. They make a really, really cool different style of HST transmission. It's like inter intervals or intermittent or so they got a fancy name for it, but it does a little, it does some things different than a regular HST on load bearing uh, ranges and things like that and how it shifts and all this. But um, Eaton, and Danfuse, if I'm saying that right, make a lot of the transmission for these for these tractors for a lot of different companies. And so, you know, you're looking at uh, what how you're gonna spec out your tractor, be it a Kubota, be it a TYM, be it an LS, whatever. Well, maybe they share some of the components that are similar or made by the same manufacturer to that particular um, brand's specifications. So maybe, you know, TYM wants an X gear ratio in their rear ends. Well, LS may want a different gear ratio in their, in their tra tractors. So, you know, the, the manufacturer of that particular part will go and they'll make that part in accordance with the specifications for that particular tractor maker or that tractor manufacturer. So, you know, you got tires being supplied by another organization. You've got HST transmissions supplied by another company or whatever, but that's not all. There's some other things that go on these tractors that are just, you know, other, other components, bits and pieces that are on them. Some of the simpler parts like Nelson Mufflers used to make uh, mufflers for Massey. Nelson Mufflers was a company in the North and the Midwest uh, toward the north, I don't I remember where they're at, maybe Michigan maybe, if you know where Nelson mufflers were, Iowa, Michigan, somewhere around in there, I can't remember. But they used to make uh, mufflers for Massey Ferguson's, if they still do or not, I'm, I'm not sure. So you've got people that are supplying these parts for these, for these manufacturers, and then the, the manufacturer will say things like, made in America or assembled in the USA, and they'll put the big American flag across it to make you think that their tractor was made in America when in fact uh, so they either were not made in America, they were just assembled in America, 
which is okay. Don't get me wrong. I'm a I'm I'm a believer in that, and I think it should happen. And I think that if you're going to uh, import your product into the USA, at least give the Americans a chance to put it together. You know what I mean? So I'm a I, I'm I don't have any issues with that at all. Um, because even John Deere does it right. Even, well, even Kubota does it. Kubota is a Japanese company, but they are assembled in Georgia or, or they're, it, it, some of it's made in Georgia, but at least, you know, the headquarters are, uh, no kidding in Japan, but, um, John Deere, you know, John Deere's got plants all around the world, India, Germany, uh, China. Uh, now granted they make construction equipment in China, but nonetheless, John Deere makes stuff in China. So it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's a global market. It's a global economy. And all these tractor manufacturers are taking parts and pieces from these different countries, these different manufacturers, and they're slapping them on the tractor and calling it theirs. Now, do the tractor manufacturers design their own? Probably. Do they steal some ideas from other tractor manufacturers? Probably. Right. But uh, so that don't don't get all hooked up about uh, don't get all wrapped around the axle about, oh, well, I like this, t this tractor because it's made by these people. Well, they may share some components with a tractor that you don't like. Uh, there's some other things like, um, oh, other brands make other brands. Uh, LS and Case, uh, they all got hooked up. They got married together to uh, make a contract to build tractors for each other. Uh, Case and New Holland. Uh, Case New Holland is who I'm talking about with LS. So they had a partnership together. Like I mentioned earlier, Yanmar engines were practically in every brand that you see out there. Uh, now, John Deere and Yanmar used to have a really, really exclusive uh, partnership. I think they've gone away with that. But nonetheless, back in the earlier models, the 80s and 90s, maybe even in it to the 2000s, John Deere was using some Yanmar engines. Uh, I don't think that's the case anymore. Uh, but I'm not a John Deere expert. But Yanmar is in a lot of tractor manufacturers. So, you know, you've got a TYM branded T224. It's got a Yanmar in it, you know. You've got um, some other of these, uh, these Mahindra type, these Mahindra tr small tractors made by TYM. TYM makes RK tractors. Coyote makes Bobcat tractors. Uh, for a while anyway, and all these agreements are getting, you know, all these agreements are set forth for a couple year time span. And then after a couple years is up, when the agreement is over, the companies may or may not choose to continue that partnership. But at the end of the day, these, these people form partnerships or these companies form partnerships to make a tractor. And then they slap their sticker on it saying, oh, look at me, I'm a Bobcat tractor. Well, you're a Coyote tractor. <laughs> you're a day dome tractor, you know? Uh, oh, look at me, I'm an RK tractor. No, you're not, you're a TYM tractor. So, uh, oh, and by the way, you've got some Yanmar parts on you and you've got some, uh, you know, Eaton parts on you. You've got some whatever parts on you, right? So with all that being said, uh, I think the main point is to, to get a tractor at a price point that you're comfortable with that can work. Cause I don't think there's any bad tractors out there. I think they all are good. In today's market, I say all, 90% out of, 90% of them, because there is, like, I am not a fan of the ITL um, manufacturing group. They make Solus and Summit. I'm just not a fan, I, and I just, maybe it's their quality control, maybe it's their, now some of you have a Solus tractor, and maybe it's because they only make, you know, like a 25 and 35 horsepower tractor. Not sure, because uh, I, you know, I've got my little 22 horsepower from TYM back there, that it does everything I need to do, but I wouldn't use that 22 horsepower subcompact tractor uh, to do some major work with. I would use a compact tractor, maybe like a 2515, uh, like a large, or the T25, a, a nice frame size 25 to 55 horsepower tractor. That's really about the only brand I'm not, in the manufacturer, and I'm talking ITL, uh, but if you've, if you've had a Solus and you've had a Summit, let me know in the comments below if it's been a good tractor for you. I'm not, and I'm basing this purely on me walking around them. I've never, I've ne I mean, I've got less than 30 minutes on the seat of those. I, uh, Andrew Kelly over at the Ke Kelly's Country Life, uh, he's got Solus. He, it's a fine looking tractor. It did what I needed it to do in the five minutes that I drove it. I'm not knocking the brand by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying I personally would not buy one. Go back and, and look at, Andrew Kelly and see what all he does with his Solus tractors. 
Summit. I've never even I've never even operated one, but I know that uh, Courtney over at Good Works Tractor, you know, he has partnered with him for a year or so. Brad over at Piney Grove Homestead uses his every now and again, but I've personally never used one. I didn't like the fit and finish of it at all uh, when I did my walk around at the Home Depot up here in Alabama. So there are a couple there are a couple that I didn't, that I don't like. Um, but LS Coyote, TYM, Bobcat, John Deere, Yanmar. I like Yanmar. Uh, you know, obviously we're big TYM fans, but the Yanmar tractors are built solid. I think they're a good product. The problem with Yanmar is, like I said in the video, is they don't have the dealer support. Um, but, you know, we talk about they all are in bed together at some point. You know, they all, and if you go to these farm shows, if you've been to a farm show, you know you'll see Mr. X in a white polo with a, a logo on it. And then you'll come back uh, next week and he's got a, you know, the next show, he's got a black polo on with a different logo on it. So they all run the same, even the people, they run the same circles, which is fine. There's, I, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying we get so, we as consumers and customers get so wrapped around the axles about my tractor is better than your tractor when and essentially they're all made from the same, you know, out of the same components. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say. But also, I, I've done some research and the truest tractors that I can find that are almost 100% from front to back is Kubota and Yanmar. Those two are the truest tractors that I can find. But if you want to get technical, I think Grammar, uh, Grammar, G-R-A, it's a German company. They actually make the seats for Kubotas from what I understand. So, I mean, even the seats are imported from somewhere else. So, you know, and that's, like I say, that's, is that nitpicking? Absolutely it's nitpicking. But the true, the truest tractors that I can find is Kubota and Yanmar that make the majority of the stuff that goes on their tractor. But let's look at why they outsource some of this stuff, right? Because it makes economical sense. If I can manufacture a tractor, if I can engineer, design, and produce a tractor, and if I build all the parts in-house, that means I've got to build the machines to build the machines. I've got to, you know, get the engineers to develop the, um, the schematics for whatever I'm trying to build or the plans that I'm trying to build. That costs money. I've got to build the facilities to... to house it all i've got to hire the skilled labor to make sure that i can they can install what we've built so you start getting into a lot of money when if i let's say uh eaton uh let's say we're going to go with an eaton hst transmission well if they've already got one built why recreate the wheel i mean it just makes financial sense for a company not to design their own unless that company has come up with a product that is better than what's already on the market. So if I come up and I invest some money, some research and development money into a, a new gearbox that's gonna work for a transmission that I'm trying to develop, and I, and I you know, after hours of testing, hours of, uh, hours of research and all this stuff, and I come up and I say, by golly, I've got a better transmission. Like we're building a better mousetrap here. By golly, I've got it. I've got the better transmission. Well then, Maybe it's worth putting that, that money into that research and development, that research or uh, the manufacturing of that product and then the uh, including it into your own tractor. But if you can't get a return on investment on that, they're not going to do it. The companies aren't going to do that because the, at the end of the day, it's about the bottom line. They've got to sell tractors. They've got to make a profit. They've got to succeed as a company. That's If you want to boil it all down to a nutshell, that's it. I've got to make a tractor people can buy. I've got to make money making that tractor. I've got to sell it. I've got to market it. I've got to support it. And at the end of the day, the company has to make money. And if the company's not making money, they're going to go by the wayside. That's just, a, that's just how it is. You know, let's say that during all this research and all this development, all this engineering, all this manufacturing, all this installation, uh, all this takes me, let's use round numbers, right? A million bucks to do one transmission. Well, Let's just say, oh, well, daggum, Danfoos, or whatever, however you pronounce that, uh, they've got one that I can buy for, for 30 grand. It's a no-brainer, right? Just buy the one that it is proven and, you know, wish you would have gotten to the market a little earlier, I guess. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, 
they all in bed together. But here's the bottom line. If you want to buy a tractor, buy, uh, you know, whatever tractor you want to buy, buy. Set, operate, drive, whatever, all of them. Well, if you've got five dealers, if you've got five different tractor dealers in your area, go to each of those tractor dealers and look at them and say, okay, I want to, you know, test drive this. I want to lift some logs with it. I want to use the bucket. I want to see if it's got a backhoe uh, attachment associated with it. I want to try to dig a hole with a backhoe. If that's something you want to do, uh, you know, how easy is, I want this specification for this horsepower, this gear rate, this type of transmission, this gear ratio, this load capacity, this lift capacity. Uh, I want this amenity uh, on the tractor itself. And then start checking boxes, make an Excel sheet or something, start checking boxes. Oh, this one had a cup holder. This one had armrest. This one lifted 100 pounds more than the other one. So when you start thinking about lift capacities, think about the grapples that you're going to put on it, the forks that you're going to put on it, because all that's going to detract from the weight of the lift capacity. Hey, I, I want uh, R4 tires. I want R1 tires. So think about all this stuff and then just go to each dealer. Go talk to the service department. Go talk to the service manager. See how you get along with them see how they're going to support you and then make a decision based on one uh what you can afford don't go in don't be tractor poor as they say uh what you need and what you like it's just that simple you know but don't get wrapped around the axle about you know parts uh, uh you know this this is a this tractor is made by tym well tym made you know all these tractor manufacturers borrow parts from other, install parts made from other manufacturers. So don't get wrapped around the axle, I guess is the point of this. And the tractor manufacturers will go out of their way to try to hide that from you, right? If you go try to research, go try to research some of this information. And because this is 30,000 feet, this is God's eye view type information. If you start digging down gearboxes, um, steering controls, linkages, um, you know, nuts and bolts, whatever, you'll start going down a rabbit hole. You're like, holy cow, right? But it's it's all good. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. We're all, like I said earlier, we're all in a global economy, a global market where that's going to happen because that's just how it is, you know? So think about that when you're buying your next tractor or if you're looking at your tractor, go outside. If you have a tractor, walk out to your yard and just start looking at it and say, daggum, I got a Yanmar engine in mine or Look at my tires. They're made by a Titan, you know? <laughs> You'll see a lot of stuff. And if you start going down this rabbit hole, you're like, wow, goodness, it gets deep, you know? But I appreciate you guys watching. Think about that. These tractor manufacturers, they're going to want me to take this video down. <laughs> because they don't want you to know their secrets, right? Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Take care. God bless you guys.